well good evening to our distinguished speaker for today uh, shamal ji and uh, mr samal buddhadev ji and all the lovely participants wonderful participants who joined yet again for the 36th webinar in analytics wednesday series today's webinar the topic is analytics in operations uh, renewable energy sector so shamal ji with his vast experience in this sector and other manufacturing companies will speak about uh, the analytics how it is can be used in operations per se now sama audit has been conducting these workshops on a weekly basis webinars on a weekly basis and they have been received very well not only is being this being telecast live here but it is being broadcast stream live on youtube also and we find that a lot of people use analytics wednesday as a reference material and keep referring the videos which have been posted on the sama youtube channel so we keep getting request from people to know which are the videos where they were posted and so on so we keep pointing them out to the sama youtube channel where all the past 35 videos are available where people participants can log on and listen to all the distinguished speakers who are sharing their experience on analytics different topics different shades of analytics and different practical experiences that they have gone through in their career and in various sectors uh, today uh, without wasting much time i would like to formally introduce uh, shamal ji so mr shamal buddhadev He is a chartered accountant, certified fraud examiner, bachelor of business administration, and diplomas in financial management and business management. So he's got two diplomas there. He has more than thirty years of multifaceted professional expertise in internal audit, fraud investigation, accounts, and commercial. He has worked with various big Indian business conglomerates in oil and gas exploration, and the refinery which is reliance industries limited infrastructure and power business adani and manufacturing sector gujarat ambuja cements he is a speaker at i icai adani institute and various other forums so very short bio he has written but uh, uh, manish my other part my partner and shamal ji you know we know each other since last so many years when we first met at adani and after that i think we have kept speaking to each other so uh, with this i would request shamal ji to please take over yeah thank you very much uh, deep ji uh, manish ji and the sama audit team for giving me an opportunity to share my views and whatever small things i do in the organization as a part of analytics so first of all let me share my screen is it visible yes absolutely clear okay so thank you very much once again to everybody for joining in to on this session and this being the first session of this year i would wish you all a very happy new year and pray that this year brings in a lot of opportunity for all of us to be a better you know version of ourselves and my friend satish you know uh, every day writes a lot of things and i get inspired from him so i'm saying this that a better version of ourselves uh, to go further uh, since i am an opening batsman of this year it puts a lot of pressure on me but uh, i will ensure that i'll give the best to my audience and secondly they will at the end of the session will feel that no they have not wasted their time so with this opening remarks i'll go on to the first slide so as usual the disclaimer 
So this information presented in this document is for knowledge sharing purposes. Uh, the views, learnings do not represent those of my current or past organization and are personal in nature. This document does not constitute professional advice and should be referred for educational purposes only, though I am no good at advising professionally at this point of time. So what do we mean by analytics? So analytics is a process which brings out a lot of insights from various types of data, like operational data, financial, others. It, it is also probably in the electronic form or maybe PDF or other forms. It may be internal to the organization, maybe external as well. And this insights may be in the form of historical data, a real time or a predictive data. It can be also used for risk based. That means control effectiveness for testing control effectiveness for fraud analytics. It can also be used for performance, uh, like increased sales, decreasing costs, improving the profitability. So all in all, it provides the how and why to the initial what, which is asked frequently. And this is, I have taken this excerpts from KPMG, one of the KPMG's uh, uh, webinars. Now, this is why analytics and uh, uh, we all know the lifeline of uh, Mumbai, the local train. So according to one of the estimates, the 80 lakh commuters every day travel in this trains. This is pre-COVID era I'm talking about. If by at an estimate of 0 0.01%, if the commuter gets into the wrong side of the human sea, what will happen? He'll get down on the wrong platform or probably on the wrong station. If going by this statistics, 32 lakh commuters would be deboarding the train at a wrong platform or a wrong station. So this is what the analytics can give us. Now, I mean, just uh, for the fun sake of it, suppose if there was a uh, train hostess, like an air hostess, what would she be saying? Hold on to your masks, be careful of cold, don't fall on each other. Okay, let's not get into that part of it. So in business, taking this analogy of analytics to the business. We are so much into day-to-day -day activities that we sometimes miss on the small, small things like the cost control, the incremental revenues which can come. This can only be you know, known to us through data analytics. So what is the outcome of analytics? Probably people may say, I would get better this and that. My first outcome of analytics is data reliability. I get a better quality of data and completeness of data. The second one, which is, which is a very important one, is initiating cultural shift. Most of the time, people do not take the responsibility or accountability on the ground saying that this is we are short of manpower. We have a issue of code. We are trying to initiate through analytics, a cultural shift saying that don't avoid trying to take accountability and responsibility and how this will happen. I'll, I'm going to demonstrate that. The third one is on decision-making with the help of analytics, we can do a better decision-making. Uh, I would say a considered decision-making and an appropriate one. And the last but not the least, we will do and process improvement in this, in this whole analytics journey. So solving this analytical puzzle. So when I started this analytics, what should I do first? So I started imagining what can I do in analytics. Then I took it further. Let me think through 
how I can apply this imagination into my areas of work. Then I started dabbling around with the data, whichever I had, tinkering with the relevant data, then applying those data along with what I wanted to audit in. And then I reiterated the process again and again and again to make it a perfect one to ensure that whatever I do, I get a real good outcome of the analytics. So my journey in analytics, so as an auditor, I started audit, uh, I started analytics uh, as a part of, uh, you know, sampling process. So I did analytics to find out what were the glitches in the system, what can go wrong in the system. And by doing analytics, I prepared a list of samples and I used to take them as a part of my testing of process. So to get a confidence level that you no, know, the process is working perfectly right, the internal controls as designed are working or can be done better. I used to do analytics for those purposes. So some of the analytics, what I'm going to present today, some of them have already been implemented. Some of them are at the design stage. Some of them are at the concept stage, even not at the design. And some of them are in the inception. So this journey of analytics, what I'm, whatever I'm going to showcase to you is done along with the business. I won't say that this is my journey. This is a journey of a team along with me, my team plus the business team who has been equally uh, you know, a partner in this whole process. So I have, yes, there is a three LODR, which usually we want to follow as an internal auditors. But if we want to change, we have to be a part of the transformation process of the transformation, you know, change which we want to bring in this whole process. And therefore, sometimes I have, you know, in, in a zeal to do things because life is too short, you cannot, you cannot wait for the next round of, uh, you know, audit to come and then you can say that uh, this uh, should have been implemented, it's still not implemented. I have become a part of the process. I have initiated that we complete the process within the timelines agreed with the process holders. And if that means working with them, I have been a part of them. So all this, whatever I'm going to present, some of them have been implemented, some of them in the design stage, some of them are in the concept stage, and some of them is in the inception. So when I, when I have taken databases, I have taken data from various pockets, from various centers, from various, uh, I, I would say, uh, locations, my site teams, my various uh, states. It's the data was lying at various places. I have collated those data. I have taken this data for various periods. That is for three years, five years, maybe more. I have taken some of the data, which is maybe very relevant to this. Some of them may say it is unrelated. But that gives me an insight. So I have also taken those data as a part of my review process. As you all know, today I'm going to be talking on operations. But before I go on to operations, I thought, let me give you a brief of what are the major components of a wind turbine. So the wind turbine consists of, and all of you must have seen it, but for a major, I mean, for a understanding of it, it consists of nasal, which is the first one. This is the nasal, which is the heart and mind of the WTG. This is called the tower on which the nasal rests. And this is the blade, the three blades. I hope everybody knows this, but still I thought, let me make people a little more understandable before I go on to the operations. So this is the first slide on the preventive maintenance. So we do a preventive maintenance on yearly basis. We have got about 9,000 odd WTGs, which spreads around nine states, 80 sites, about a field staff of about 2,400 people. 
and this preventive maintenance activity is done twice in a year one is half yearly and the other one is yearly basis so if i have to do a preventive maintenance of this 9000 wtgs twice in a year means 18000 entries would be generated in my pm module in the erp that is what it is and the data would look something like this which you can see on the screen now if i have to use this data for my analytics what should i do so uh, i hope you all have a, uh, have had a taste of pani puris the pani puri vendor you know prepares the pani puris based on the liking of the person maybe hot sweet chili whatever depending upon what the pani puri is desired by the customer and he puts in the ingredients accordingly so today i am going to put the ingredients and show you what and how the analytics through the analytics process the outcome can be chili or sweet so i have taken a sample of six wtgs i showed you the pm data in the previous slide now i've taken only three particular columns the actual start date of the activity the end date of the activity and the closure of the activity in the system so i've taken six sample wtgs to demonstrate what i have done so you can see that in the first wtg the start date of the activity is first of may and date is also the same the closure date is same similarly for there is no problem with the second one the third one there is no end date mentioned in the the pm module however it has been closed in the system similarly if you see there is no problem with the fourth if you see the uh, fifth one the closure date is erroneously or something wrong with it it is mentioned as 46 while the end date is 126 so there is something seems to be incorrect here and in the third wd so i am now going to add one more field to it that is my sap crm data that is the material closure or the material order through which i actually take the data from my stores for this preventive maintenance activity so the stores manager gives against each of these wtgs certain uh, consumables to be used as a part of the activity so if you can see the material has been given and the material closure has been done on first for the first wtg for the second one there is one day early the material has been taken but that is not a problem for the third one the material has been taken so it seems that there is a, a error of not putting the end date by the concerned engineer for the fourth wtg the material has not been taken by the fellow at all which is, seems to be a little alarming but maybe he would have used this particular material of some other wtg in this wtg number four the wtg number five tells me something which is very different the material has been taken on fourth while the activity has been done on 12th so that means he probably had taken the material earlier but he has not completed the activity as per the plan the sixth wtg gives me you know it gives me a very good idea that yes the things are going in proper shape now i am adding one more layer to this or one more ingredient to this which is operations data now every wtg when the engineer visits he has to tick box certain things which he has taken care of like whether he has seen that there is no leakage whether he has done the cleaning or there are about 100 uh, points which he has to see has to take a picture and post completion of the activity he has to complete that particular closure in another app which is an auto uh, which is a mobile driven app so he completes that activity saying that i have completed this activity on first which is perfectly in order he had started this activity and he has completed this activity also on first 
Similarly, for WTG number two, it is fourth. The third number WTG, he says he has not done the completion activity at all. So in the mobile app, which he has to tick box, he has to say that he has completed his activity. He has not closed that activity. For WTG number four, he has completed it. Five also he has completed it. And for six, once again, it has not been completed. So this gives me a fair idea that for WTG number three, something seems to be going not right. Now I'm adding one more layer to this, is for carrying out this particular WTG preventive maintenance, the WTG needs to be stopped during the 24 hours. So I have checked the operations data and I have seen that whether the WTG was stopped or not. So it seems that WTG one was never stopped on 1521. That means, Probably the WTG preventive activity cannot be completed without stoppage. So how did this activity then happen on first, which is a matter for me to further review. Similarly, you can see that here also on third for WTG number three, there was no stoppage of activity or no stoppage of WTG, which has happened. So which is an alarming for me. For WTG number six also, though the activity according to the engineer has been completed, but it has not been, the WTG has never stopped. Now, there we, we added one more layer to this, that for carrying out this activity, certain threshold number of hours, for certain threshold number of hours, the WTG should be stopped. For example, for carrying out this activity, five hours, there should be minimum five hours of stoppage of this WTG. So when there was no stoppage at all of this WTG, threshold hours is not applicable at all. Here you can see that the WTG number two, there was a stoppage and there was a stoppage beyond the threshold limit. So therefore, this clearly indicates that the activity was done on fourth and there was a stoppage time also. So things to be falling in place for WTG number two. For WTG number three, if you see on ninth, there is no stoppage. So therefore the question of threshold time does not arise and similarly for others. Now, I'm going to add one more layer to this, is whether I have a preventive maintenance contract with the customer or not, because these WTGs, we are not the owners of these WTGs. We are a service provider to these WTGs. So whether we have a contract in place for these WTGs? Probably yes. For the first four WTGs, we have a contract in place. For the fifth WTG, the contract is not there in place at all. So probably, the customer is taking care of this WTG on his own. He is doing the preventive maintenance on his own. But I have done as of now, or probably the customer has not given me the current year's money of preventive maintenance and still uh, maintenance money, but still I have carried out the preventive maintenance probably. The WTG number six, there is a contract in place. So I'm now adding more and more layers of data to my initial start of preventive maintenance. So normally I would have closed out the activity with only this first uh, box saying that what is the start date, end date and the closure. And, and as a traditional auditor, I would have said that all the WTGs have been, you know, preventive maintenance have been done or wherever it is not done. There is an RCA for it, root cause analysis and the management is aware about it. But when I keep on adding the layers of data, I come to know more and more of what would have happened or what are the hidden insights into this. I'm going to add one more layer to this. Now for this activity, I am hiring a third party vendor and the third party vendor gives me his invoices saying on which date he has completed this particular activity. And when I see this, 
for WTG number one, my vendor has informed me that this activity was completed on second. So probably, if you see the my engineer has mentioned on first, this activity was done, but the WTG stoppage time was not there at all. But my vendor says that this activity was done on second. So probably there is an error here, which my engineer has done. He has done this activity probably on second, but by oversight, he has mentioned as first on all the checkpoints, which is once again a point to verify. Similarly, if I see for WTG number two, WTG number three, here, the activity has not been done on 9th, but the when my contractor says that this activity was done on 7th. So now I need to verify whether this activity was actually done on 7.5. If it was done on 7.5, I will have to check the WTG stoppage data. I would have to check for threshold limit of hours, whether it, has, it was stopped for those many hours or not. So it requires an additional review and it gives me a details of outliers. So now whatever I have informed you is that in the first case, the WTG was not stopped on first. It would have been probably stopped on second. The material order date is prior to, sorry, this is material order date is prior to the activity date, which may be correct, but these are the aberrations which are happening, which I need to verify. Now, this also gives me another perspective. If I, these are, uh, this is a sample of six WTGs. If I take this or extrapolate this for a site or a state or an area, I would be able to know whether the engineer on this particular site is really, uh, I, I, he's making mistakes or is he ignorant about certain things? Like, for example, he's not closing this technical completion, but he is showing that this activity was completed by him. So whether he is not aware that he has to complete this, we are also through this process linking the various databases. Like for example, after doing this analytics, we have built in more controls at this level, whereby the system will not allow anybody to have a closure date earlier to start date and end date. We have also built in this uh, in the technical completion date. Unless this is completed, the system will not allow the person to close this SAP PM. So this has been linked here. So we have brought in a lot more, you know, uh, I would say controls in place to ensure that we know actually what is happening at the ground level sitting in HO. If there, is an, uh, if there is a particular engineer who is really making a false technical completion or he's putting a wrong end date or an actual start date, this will get clearly articulated from the various data points. So that is what we have done on the grounds of preventive maintenance. I'll go on to another area on oil change data. So an oil change like uh, uh, our car in wtgs there is a gearbox so this gearbox has to be you know oil change has to be done over a period of time depending upon the type of the oil used so it may be three years five years or maybe depending upon the the wtg model size etc so normally as an auditor, if I'm looking at the consumption patterns or consumption of an WTG oil, I would see what is that has happened. So I'll see, I will, I'm taking a sample of seven WTGs once again. Now I have plotted as per the yearly records, how much oil is consumed in this particular WTGs. So I can see that, okay, fine, 800, 700, 36 okay good 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 no no problem now when i add the oil tank capacity i realize that if i am changing the data uh, if i am changing the oil on a tank capacity of 420 how can 1020 liters be used so there is 
something my engineer has done or probably he has changed some other tank also he has changed oil in some other tank also which he has erroneously put in wtg number one so there is a difference of 600 liters in the first round itself so i can find out that there is something wrong which is happening here now there once i change the oil the used oil will be returned to the stores so when i receive the used oil i will receive a because whatever i pump into the uh, oil tank 90 percent should at least come back because when you rinse the tank some of the oil will go waste so if i receive the 90 percent of the oil back as a threshold limit in the first case you can see that out of 1020 he has returned 620 liters so if the tank capacity is 420 how can he give me back 620 so probably some of the fresh oil is being returned as used oil and some of it is probably getting used in some other wtgs so i need to get into depth of it similarly i will come to know how much of the percentage of oil is getting returned and why am i interested in the return percentage because the returned oil gives me about 30 to 35 rupees per liter when it is sold in the open market this gives me an inclination that i need to go into depth to find out why there is so low level of return happening from the sites so the the pictorial the graphical view tells me that on wtg1 the tank capacity is 420 but the oil consumption is 1020 similarly for others so this is what has on the top side the data was there below we have shown in a pictorial way similarly for used oil as a threshold of 90 percent which is the engineering guidelines probably i have taken an engineering guidelines of 90 percent but it depends upon uh, it depends upon the WTG, depends upon the model, etc. For easy understanding, I have taken 90%. Now I'm going further on the oil change data. I'm, I'm, I'm adding one more area to it. So I am now on the left side, you can see that there is a states which are mentioned. I am plotting it on year on year basis, data base. So for state one in year one, 18,000 liters were used. The return was only 8,000 liters. I should have ideally received maybe 90% or 80%, but I have received only 44%. So that means some of my oil is either unaccounted for or is not properly getting back into my system, which gives me a sign of further review in this whole process. Similarly for year two, and, and this is when we started the process, this was the data. When we did the second year, the same process, you can see the improvement which is happening around, but still you can see there is quite a big gap between the various states. This indicates that some of the states are very meticulous, while some of the states are not performing up to the mark. Similarly, I am showing this as a part of graphical presentation, but this is what has been explained to you on the top. So as a part of oil change process, we should know what is the oil consumed, tank capacity, return, and how much percentage is getting written. So we have added on layers of analytics to find out what is getting consumed and used. We can add one more layer, which is, which is in the pipeline is how much has been uploaded as for the sale purposes because that will give me an idea of how much of my used oil is lying at my warehouse suppose if out of this used oil return 33000 liters if i am selling only 30000 liters at the year end that means 3000 liters is still lying at my warehouse which needs to be sold immediately first it is a hazard at the site because if the oil is 
remaining at the site uh, at the warehouse it is a hazard secondly there is a chances of pilferage of this oil and thirdly if the quantity available was only 30000 and i am showing as return is 33000 there is something which i need to do additionally to track whether this data is wrongly punched or somebody is not doing his job properly so we are into that additional layer of analytics which i said we are in the design stage of doing it i'll go to the third point which is on security and probably it's more related why i have chosen security as a part of operations is because our wtgs are far fetched and security at this sites is equally important like our preventive maintenance activity so if you see the first state and i have done a comparison or probably analytics year on year basis i have on 104 wtgs i had 117 instances of theft similarly for year 2 129 and 162 instances 105 and 125 so one thing which comes out clearly is that if there was one theft incident per wtg how can i have 117 instances that means it is very clear that one wtg is probably under the target more than once in a year which is if you come to the third uh, here year three of state two there are 33 wtgs which are targeted 33 times so probably probably every wtg or 33 wtgs have been targeted only once but this gives me an alarming picture of having one wtg targeted more than once in a year and these are not the number of wtgs but these are the target of thefts wtg so we did an analytics of this and we came to know that there were certain wtgs where which were year on year basis being targeted for theft certain wtgs were not only targeted once as you can see but more than twice which were done and certain wtgs were there which were you know targeted but for various other purposes and and this gave us an indication of what we should look forward to so i have taken a further deep dive into it like the in the earlier instances we had a state and a year now here we have taken further locations and period when i say period is the quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four so in location a in quarter one there were 20 instances of theft in quarter two 10 in quarter three seven quarter four 90. so the total in this particular location and this location a would be having about 20 50 odd wtgs there were 56 times theft incidents have taken place similarly for location b c and d and basis this we can prepare a heat maps a heat map identifying or prioritizing which location we should have more watch and ward facilities and in which period this gives us a very clear-cut understanding of the things similarly i have done uh, for state two which is a a graphical presentation trying to state the same thing where you can see that location d 13 21 6 and 17 you know location i'm sorry quarter four is the highest running so this is how you can use analytics to find out the theft locations and we can do a further root cause analysis of this as well so what is our learning from this so we have prepared a heat maps based on the states areas sites based on these thefts we have identified wtgs which were being targeted more than once for installation of cctv cameras we have done a root analysis root cause analysis 
to find out why in a particular quarter there is a surge is it that during this period the population around has no other activity so we have then used this particular uh, root cause analysis to initiate our csr activities as a part of intervention to reduce this thefts or whether we can have any other activities which can help us to reduce these thefts we have created a task force during this red zone areas in a particular quarter if you find that this is one quarter where is there is a, a huge theft incidents we have put in more security a rapid action task force like team which keeps on monitoring those areas on regular basis and which will stop this theft the four and the last one is we have put gps on this watch and ward vehicles so to check the efficiency of the security surve surveillance that whenever there is a cable cut which happens and gets notified at our main control node immediately the security gets a warning saying that there is a cut of cable the security vehicle immediately rushes to that spot to identify if it was because of the theft of something or it was due to some other error so what is the time when the security team received the alarm and they reached the site can also be tracked to the gps and this will result in finding finding the efficiency of our security surveillance team so this is what we have done with our security data uh, i have last 15 minutes uh, just yes. uh, shamal ji yes. uh, there are two questions i think relevant questions one is on this third instance you know on operational analytics which you have given about thefts yes our friend satish is saying what do people steal first is what do they steal cables cables yes. okay and the second question from dolly majumdar is that you know uh, does so many uh, this high incidence of theft does it not indicate that you know there is a lack of internal control or something is drastically wrong no these uh, uh, you know probably if we give a perspective to this this wtgs are spread over a wide area and uh, why i would say wide area because uh, there is a you know where uh, you cannot have two wtgs besides each other because you have a vac when when there is a wind flow because of one wtg the next wtg will have an effect and there uh, the the generation data would be low so this wtgs are spread across and and they are spread across in few kilometers so when we talk about uh, uh, the thefts if there is a one cable cut happening at one location and the security rushes to that spot by the time we locate that there is a, another cable cut which has happened at another location the security team the security team by the time it reaches there probably a theft has already taken place so they also uh, being widespread located it is very difficult to control the theft incidents and this theft incidents happen for very peanut things you know uh, maybe for cable maybe for oil or various other things small small things even for uh, probably you will say they'll take away certain screws and nuts and bolts of the wtgs because that can be sold in the open market for use right and uh, if this cable is stolen it will impact the operation of the wtv right absolutely 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 so the the message would come down to the main uh, control station saying that we have lost the connection of the wtg so immediately the security vehicle will rush to that site to find out what is the reason for the cable cut right i think there's just one uh, small yes. thing which shiva kumar from isro is pointing it out that we could see huge number of wtgs in kanyakumari and tirunal veli road yes i think that's an ideal place for uh, wind energy yes for yeah. yes tamil nadu andhra pradesh gujarat rajasthan these are ideal states you can say windy sites are there a lot of windy sites are there right uh i'll go to the next slide please so 
uh, I, I'm, I'm coming to the weird conclusion based on analytics. So this particular thing I've taken from a book of free economics. And uh, there's a story of a czar, you know, there was one czar who said that, uh, who found out that there was a particular province which had the maximum number of disease, most disease, and had the maximum number of doctors also. So he came to the conclusion that all the doctors should be shot dead because the number of, the more number of doctors were there, they were only spreading the disease. That is what he concluded on. The second one is on, uh, on uh, watch and ward facilities. Denver and Washington has the same population. Washington has three times the police force than Denver. And Washington has eight times the number of murders. So somebody can conclude from this is the extra police in Washington is responsible for causing the murders. These are weird conclusions which a person can also arrive on the basis of analytics. Unless we do a further deep diving, we may come to a weird conclusion. So as I was saying, we need to seek more additional information, which can help us to come to a better conclusion. So as I said, what is the benefit of analytics? It gives us a unique perspectives. Insights are data backed. It is predictive modeling, process improvements are there. You can have, you can uncover hidden facts out of this. There is a lot of decision making which can happen. You know, why is a better decision making which can happen because of this. And the most important, which I feel as a company can do it is cultural change. We can bring in through ownership and responsibility. We can pinpoint who is the person who is not working properly or who needs guidance or who needs training or who is really lackluster in his work. So I am reminded of Isaac Newton's uh, you know, a beautiful saying, I don't know what I may appear to the world, but to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, while the whole ocean, the great ocean of truth, lay all undiscovered before me. Similar is our analytics. We are playing around on the analytic front, like you know, finding small, small pebbles and 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 uh, getting ourselves rejoiced that we have done something great while the whole data is in front of us, we need to explore it. We need to go into more depth of it and we can come out with, with beautiful solutions, I would say, wonderful solutions. I end my presentation, it's 7.50 and I had planned to complete it on 7.45, but yeah, I've taken five more minutes. Uh, if there are any inputs or any details which can be, uh, which you think I have missed out on, I'm open for discussion. And please note that whatever details I have shared is probably not exactly what is happening. Some of them may be a hypothetical one to give a feel of what we are doing. It may not be exactly what is happening around. Like, for example, one of uh, I think so. Dolly said that what is is it so many happen so many thefts happening around? There may not be so many incidences of theft. We may have a little hyped it up to give a perspective of what is being done at an analytic level. Thank you, thank you very much. I think a very informative presentation. There's a question from Satish. Very nice presentation. Very hands on. How difficult has this journey been for you and your team? Was it easy or was it tough? It must have been very interesting though. It has been, uh, I, I would say Satish, uh, uh, it has been a tough journey for me and my team because this data lies at various pockets and people are not very open to share this data. This 
if this data was lying at a common repository, it would have been a great help to us that we could explore anything and everything. But as of now, we are now making the business aware that we can do a lot of analytics with the data. And therefore, now this data is getting slowly accumulated or compiled at the central level. Yes, still we have tons of data lying at the sites which we can still uh, assimilate at the central level and do a better thing. But our journey has been, you know, I would say a challenging one, not a hard one, but I am finding it very interesting. Thank you for the very good response. Uh, I think excellent, extraordinary knowledge, expertise in the field of analytics. So I think a lot of appreciation, uh, Shamalji. Uh, Thank you. So I think uh, there are no other questions which I can see. So I think with this, uh, you can note, I think you already noted the email ID of Shamalji. Uh, so I think that with that, you may write to us or you may write to Shamalji. Uh, Shamalji, thank you very much for this excellent presentation and for this wonderful, you know, uh, evening that you spent with us, especially what we liked, you know, what I liked was, uh, personally speaking was the examples, you know, how insightful, you know, uh, because, uh, analytics, you know, you statistics is you can push it the way you want to. But to really glean, you know, to really get wisdom out of it, you need to really analyze it in the business perspective. So what is important is you should really have good domain knowledge, good business perspective, good business knowledge, and then look at analytics, you know, the figures which are coming out and then how correlation is required. And one other thing which uh, you spoke at the beginning of the presentation was very relevant that one need not collect only the relevant data. One needs to even collect some other data, which is not directly relevant, but which may prove, you know, useful in the long run, because you can correlate that data to ensure that it becomes meaningful and throws light on what you are studying. So I think that that came out very clearly. So when you go out, you collect a lot of data and maybe some data, which may not be very relevant, but you look at that, try to correlate it, make some meaning out of it and then ensure that it really becomes relevant for you at the end. So I think that was one other insight which uh, struck me, you know, when you were speaking about it at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so thank you very much, Shamalji. I thank you on behalf of Summer Audit. I thank you. And uh, I thank all the participants who have joined us. I have one query from Hethel that can I get recording of this video I missed due to meeting? Sure. Uh, tomorrow morning when you log on to Sama YouTube channel, it will be there. So we'll edit this and it will be available tomorrow morning. It will be rendered. The video will be rendered properly and put up on the Sama YouTube channel and you can have a look at it. So thank you very much, uh, Shamalji. Thank you. Thanks a lot to all the participants, Shiva Kumarji, Satish Shenoy, Dolly Majumda, and a lot of all the other participants who have joined in. And we look forward to one more uh, webinar next week when we have a Sandeep Baldava who is going to enlighten us on, you know, uh, forensic data analytics. So Shamaji, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks.